Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. And we've played as Kimberly, Trini, and Billy. It's time for the Zack Attack. The Zack Man. Right. Hip Hop Keto. <laughs> Hip Hop Keto. It was his dance martial arts. Yeah, that's right. The oh second in command of the Power Rangers. The main man, Zack. With his awesome parachute pants. Yes. Gotta love the parachute pants. You, you have to really wonder what the guy who um, animated this game and did the, you know, of all the outfits to pick to yeah. immortalize Zack, why the parachute pants? Did he even wear those a lot in the show? It's or? hammer time. No, maybe one yeah. episode. Maybe one episode. Wow. You know? I just, I don't even know what to so. say there. And rocking the, I, I totally used to wear what he was wearing though. See how he has like a sleeveless vest? Like really? Under, you did the sleeveless vest I did thing? The, I did the sleeveless vest. You know what's vest. weird is like, when I picture teenagers in my mind, I picture 90s teenagers. They I were, know! They're so much more expressive uh, than, yeah. like today, everyone wears the same thing. Yep. Whereas in the 90s, like your clothes were just so out there. It was like in you your face. You could be a Power Ranger. Like, <laughs> you know, you all had a color Like theme. everybody was yeah. like wearing, I remember even, like I had this coat that had like, like seven different colors on it. It was just like, you you couldn't miss teenagers walking down the street. They were just there. Totally. Yeah. So <laughs> I always, ever since I've played this game for 20 years, which is amazing that I played this game for that long. Once a year, I always play this game. It's like my, um, one of my favorite Super Nintendo games of all time. Top 50 easily. Um, I always play this level with Zack. Zack yeah. is the second in command. He's right before Jason. And this is a tough level. Yeah. So you need the Zack man. That's yes. just, I, I've and seen I, people play with Kimberly and, and other I, things. And but. I agree, like, with, you were telling me people, what people have said about, like, his face, the something looks wrong with it. Doesn't it doesn't look just, like a human. That doesn't look like Zack at all. And, yeah, it just looks bad. They didn't do his face justice. No. I would I would be like, if I was Zack, I'd be, like, shaking my fist at them, like, what? He looks but like anyway, that besides he has, that. He, he looks like he has the same, like, skin problem Michael Jackson had. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he has psoriasis all over his skin. Yeah. But, yeah, moving on, yeah. Zack is, you were telling me that... They incorporated, like, Zack had this cool fighting style where, well, he's actually doing it he's now. He's doing it right now. It's called totally, Hip Hop Keto. Yeah, he danced his way to victory against yeah. the... In real life, Walter Jones <laughs> is a really um, competent, like, awesome martial artist. Uh -huh. And he's also a dancer. So what he did, and this was not in the script, because originally, Walter Jones tried out for the role of Billy. But he and oh, um, okay. he and uh, David Yaus they switched. Oh, okay, so I see. So he became Zach and David became Billy. Wow. Um, so Zach was going to be the nerd character, oh, and okay. David Yaus was going to be the cool, you know, cool kid. Oh, and then they decided to switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when they were um, filming a lot of the live action stuff, he just started to. They said, "Okay, do some freestyle stuff," and he just incorporated like beatboxing. Or not beatboxing. Um, what do they call it? Uh, um, hip no, what was the, the the dancing in the '80s? What was it called? It wasn't beatbox. That's that's the thing with the mouth. It's um, oh break my dancing. Oh gosh! That's yeah. it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He incorporated break dance <laughs> with martial arts and kind of did like capoeira, like that African like fighting style. Mm -hmm. But then he cranked it to eleven and incorporated wow. a lot of like MC Hammer's moves that's and things cool. like that. And it really. The, when he was trying out for it, people are just like, yes, you know, do more of that. So for the first and a lot of the second season, he incorporated like, you know, dance moves into That's the martial so arts. And it That's was, so yeah, awesome. it was so cool to watch. And sometimes he would get some of the other rangers to do it as well. I mean, I can imagine their faces like when he's trying out, like, whoa. <laughs> now, his cool. replacement, Adam, was strictly kung fu, like Trini. Oh, okay. Except since it wasn't like using a lot of Sentai footage for the martial arts battles, Adam would incorporate like uh, kung fu moves with his ranger, which oh, is something Trini okay. should have been able to do, but, you know, I, she didn't. I feel so bad for Zach. Well, I already said, but it's like, I just feel bad because he tried to do the right thing by getting more money for the, you know, the stunt actors and the crew, and he never got to come back. He came the Power at, Actually, no, that's not true. Zach came back and as a uh, voiceover person, so he did a lot of the oh, monsters. Oh, oh he, he's I He's a see. very talented voice actor. All right, all right. So Walter Jones cool. came back and he did but, a lot of the monsters that Rocky, Aisha, 
and Adam would fight. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like, yeah. I mean, he still he still was a, a actor in the series, and yeah. he went on to actually do the voices for a lot of Power Ranger uh, villains until almost in space. Oh, wow. Like, right near the end of the Saban era. Like, he but, was still doing the voices. Yeah, I feel like he did kind of, he got his just, like, he was able to kind of be rewarded for it, because I think he got, he was able to do, like you were saying last time, he got well, the, to the get one do thing a lot of really cool that stuff Zach after always that. wanted to do, or his actor, is mm-hmm. he wanted to be a union actor. Mm-hmm. And um, to this day, I mean, he's been part of unions, he's very happy. Mm-hmm. Would he have walked off the set the way they did? Like, looking back on it, all the living rangers are like, no, we probably wouldn't have walked off like that. We would have done the movie, and, you know, yeah. like, we would have prevented the child, like, you know, thing, and maybe just had Saban bring in a new cast of rangers so the alien rangers wouldn't quite be what it was. Yeah. Um, because it was a little weird. I mean, the only reason the alien rangers didn't do that well is they had, like, these weird, like, before auto-tune voices, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't that cool. And they had really cool powers, that's the thing. The Aquatar Rangers, they were just weird. And again, the reason why they were brought in is because the ratings were so bad after bringing in Rocky, Adam, and Aisha and trying to continue the show. Like, after one episode, it's like Jason Trini and Zack never existed. Oh my god. They just carried on. Like, there's no storylines where Rocky's trying to fill in Jason's shoes to be a good ranger. I know. No, there's none of that. Yeah, it's just like a race. It never happened. Like, pretend it never happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's too awkward. That was was bad. On whoever did the writing for that transition, they were terrible because. Um, Kat, who replaces Kimberly later, she laments a lot about how she's not as good a ranger as Kimberly. And while oh. she did the pity party a little bit too much, um, you know, it, it Yeah, made at sense. least they said something about it, yeah. And when Jason came back to the show, Rocky felt uncomfortable that his predecessor, you know, was back in action. Yeah, And, yeah. you know, he tried to do a lot of stupid things as the Blue Zeo Ranger to prove to jason and everybody else that he was a good ranger and yeah. that's the only time they ever commented on the uh awkwardness between jason and rocky yeah but in real life austin st john has no issues with steve Caratus or whatever his name is yeah um so yeah i i just love seeing like i really Ow. hope we do get to see austin st john and the other rangers oh and dino uh dino we, charge no i just mean like in real life like oh they're to touring meet them? everywhere yeah, yeah but i think it's so cool that the original i'm sorry i don't know the actor's name for uh zach walter um, jones oh walter jones i just think it's cool that walter jones and austin st john are friends in real life and it's so yep. It's so cool to see them together touring. I just touring. want to cut you off. I want to talk about Genie real oh, quick. Oh, yeah, sure. The monster that we're fighting, um, he did not have these moves in the show, and he is also one of the only monsters that the Power Rangers ever faced not to blow up, unlike in this game. What happens is he vanishes, and that's oh. because in the Sentai show, the Genie was actually in cahoots with the um, Sentai Rangers. Like, oh, he okay. was uh, used by the Rita Repulsa character, and he became evil, but then they set him free at the end and he disappears. That's why in the show, when they're fighting him and he disappears, that's what it means. In in the uh, Power Rangers episode that he's in, he disappears, but, like, uh, it, it's awkward. Like, you don't yeah. really understand why he didn't blow up. He didn't... Every other every other enemy gets blown up except mm-hmm. for that guy. He's one of the only for ones. Genie. Yep. Yeah. And he has very little interaction with the Rangers in the show. Like, there's a lot of live action bits between the teenagers and things like that, and not so much of the actual monster. Yeah. So, of course, we're on the final level, and we have to bring in the leader of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Jason. Wow, those are some really tight red jeans. (laughs) I I, I, (laughs) I just don't know what to say about that. I know. I might prefer the parachute pants. (laughs) <laughs> well, this is this is a combination of his first outfit from um, the day of the dumpster. The only difference is he's not wearing the shorts or the um, the. Everybody had the plaid like open shirts that they would wear over t-shirts in the nineties. Oh, okay. And Jason yeah. wore those a lot. But Jason's fighting style, what's different than Rocky and Tommy, is he likes to use his fists a lot to show that he's a powerful character. Yeah. And he'll only do flying kicks occasionally or whatever, but um, when they were doing this game, they incorporated a lot of his, like, punching Mm -hmm. and things like that. And he hits hard, too. This is a really cool game in general. I mean, it looks so fun to play. I mean, I don't know. It's... I wish they had more games like this. Now, see how the putties have different weapons, like I was telling you about before? Um, that's the only difference that would happen with putties, like, as the seasons progressed. Yeah, they would basically Lord, look the same. Yeah, before Lord Zed would incorporate um, the 
Z putties, which were never in the Sentai series. They made those for America. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the Dio Rangers or the Alien Rangers and Sentai fought against yeah. because they didn't bring them into the show. Might have been the Tangu Warriors or something, or it might have been a creation for um, Power Rangers. I, I, like I said, I stopped watching Power Rangers after the Power Transfer episode. And then when I heard that um, Jason was going to be the Gold Ranger, it was like, just like everybody else, I came back and I watched the show for like Yay. 20 episodes. I stayed for the first episode of Turbo, and it was the most ridiculous thing I ever saw, and I left. And then when people were talking about how mature Power Rangers in Space was, it was like, all right, I'll watch it. And right. I watched Power Rangers in Space the whole series. The, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just watching a few clips before this and you just telling me everything about what be Jason the the best leader. I mean, when you just watch him on on the, you know, on the on the episodes, he has so much stage presence, you know, like you just your eye goes right to him and he like you he has emotion for every single character. He he acts like a real leader, like he feels for every character, like he's responsible for every single one. And he's always, you know, like a rock. Like he always is he always has got it under control. Like when they're being um, zapped up for the first time and they don't know what's going on, they're like, you know, he's like, hang on. He's like helping them, everyone else out. Even you know? though he's scared himself. Exactly. Yeah. So, it, I mean, he he did a great job of, I, I think if it wasn't for us and St. John, I don't know if Power Rangers would have been as big of a hit, you know. He, he really did a great job embodying, embodying you know, the leader. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, the thing that I really like about the whole Power Rangers thing, I mean, it, it changed a lot of stuff, but the show did get really hokey after a while, and it was yeah. like, when they started to um, veer away from incorporating the Sentai stuff into it, yeah. it got really weird. And because of that, you know, we missed the opportunity to get other adaptions from, you know, other Sentai shows, which they do now. I mean, Spawn yeah. learned his lesson. Although he didn't quite learn his lesson with uh, Megaforce and Super Megaforce. They're the same Rangers. So, Megaforce is the same, which is an adaption of the Angel Rangers from Japan, but, you know, due to yeah. uh, controversy, they can't call them angels or something. Yeah. What? I know. It's and like, what? They, wouldn't, they wouldn't let That's the Pirate so Rangers, who was the next adaption after it's, Megaforce, it's be pirates. Having Angel Rangers? I mean, that would be so much cooler than whatever they call the Megaforce Rangers. Well, when the Angel Rangers appeared in an anniversary special in Sentai, like, to highlight them, they come, like, out of the heavens and they wipe out like half this battalion of bad guys and wow. the other Sentai Rangers are like who are these guys? How is that not cool? I know that's a great introduction right wow. there. Wow. Yeah. And they hardly did any of that in the entire Megaforce series. They were like some of the Megaforce was probably one of the worst Power Rangers adaptions I've ever seen. Samurai wasn't bad. Samurai was pretty dark to begin well, with. Like apparently they just have to make everything dumber here because we it can't seems handle like it. <laughs> we can't but handle coolness. The thing that I find interesting is Disney took a Power Rangers series or a Sentai series that was supposed to be a parody and it was a parody in Japan. Like the Sentai is so popular in Japan that they could parody themselves. Yeah. And I forget what series it was. There was a couple one. It might have been the one with the talking animal cars or the talking like um, SPD. I, I don't remember. But um, they incorporated it when it came over to the States as a serious show. Mm-hmm. And it kind of worked, but at the same time, it was supposed to be a parody. And then the next show after that, um, they tried to do an yeah. in-between in America, and it's like, that no, is, it doesn't work. That's so weird that they kind of made the serious Sentai stuff from Japan goofy, but then they took the goofy thing from Japan and tried to make it serious. I mean, it's just like, ah, you're never winning here. But that is hilarious when you were telling me that... Like, people were saying that, you know, Americans ruined Sentai, and then everyone over here was like, what? What's Sentai? <laughs> so then, like, we had no, like, people had no idea even that it was originally from Japan. Like, well, I mean, some people yeah. did, but a lot of people didn't. Well, so. I mean, I'm, I'm not, a lot of people watching this, I'm not a purist. I don't know everything about Zoo Ranger or Sentai or the, the original stuff. I've seen it um, once in a while. I'm, I was a huge Kamen Rider Black fan. And Black RX engine, you know, um, I really and enjoyed Rider, that. No. <laughs> yeah, it became my Ramen Rider series, exactly. Um, I might have to watch the original because you said the storyline was really oh, cool. The original Zoo Ranger is very that, dark, incredibly yeah. dark. Um, but I, uh, I might have to watch it. It's, now. it's still pretty yeah. fun. Um, actually, Shout Factory has re-released Zoo Ranger, subtitled, 
Like, mm -hmm. we can, I can get you the DVDs, you can oh. watch it. Well, maybe I will, I'll, I'll see. Yeah. I'll watch one. Because I might, I might add it to my collection. I still don't have the original Power Rangers on DVD because I don't want Rocky in my collection. And they've incorporated the entire Mighty Morphin as one series, and it's like, <laughs> I don't... I will just burn the disc <laughs> season because I, I don't want it. I, I, well, I remember when they were showing, like when Kimberly was exiting that one in that one episode, and they it's never. Like, when is she gonna leave? No, like she was there for forever, but it was like they the never. Goodbye. They never did a close up on Rocky's expression. Like they no. didn't show him at all, nope. and it was just like, what? Now he was he supposed to be the leader at that point, or no? Oh, Tommy was okay. The all right. All no, right. Rocky, uh, Rocky couldn't confused. lead out of a paper bag. Okay. He was, he was the most, you know. Steve Rodimus. <laughs> he was the Lego Robin of the Power Rangers. How's oh, that? No. That's... He was me playing as Lego yeah. Robin. <laughs> he would be you with the Tyrannosaurus coin. Playing as okay. Lego Robin. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The oh, other replacements, Aisha, Aisha and Adam did pretty good. Um, yeah. As replacements, they weren't better than the replacements, but yeah. I, I would say out of the three, the best um, replacement ranger who really uh, came into his own was Adam. Hmm. Adam was fantastic. I really love Adam. I wish he, you know, could have waited till Zeo because I, I don't want him to so replace they all, Zach. They only got to replace them for a little bit, and then they were gone, right? And then the, um, it was a new thing. Aisha just stayed on as the Yellow Ranger, and then she left after they like kicked them off the show for a while when they made them little kids. Oh. Um, oh, okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. At least that's the story. I mean, there, there's two things that could have happened. They could have gotten kicked off on the show, or they could have gone somewhere to start filming the Zeo stuff while they were... Maybe they split the studio in two oh, so they could do the okay. Alien Ranger right. stuff. I don't know. Who um, knows? You know. Yep. Alright, awesome. so the guy that I'm fighting right now, just so people know, um, in the Power Rangers series, he stole um, Uncle Howard's invisibility potion because, no. you know, Trini's uncle supposedly had an invisibility potion. Wow, that's and pretty amazing. And the name of the episode originally was going to be called The Ninja Invisible Impossible, or whatever. And, oh um, yeah, he's using his little... Yeah, he yeah. disappears. He's using that little potion trick. to make himself disappear. Yep. And, um... I think Billy was the one who was able to defeat him, actually. I think he stole that from Batman. No, I don't know. But, it, I mean, this is, this is of course, a Sentai villain yeah. um, from the Zoo Ranger series. Yep. And he had the ability to turn invisible and things like that. But when they adapted it for the American version, they had the potion do it. But he has, like, um, a sickle right here, which mm -hmm. is easy to duck. Um, I, I know this game so well that I can play it in my sleep, even though this boss is giving me a tough time. Um, he uses a sword, and he has some of the coolest monster attacks, so it's a fitting enemy for Jason to fight at the end of the game. That's why I always have nice. Jason as the, the final guy to fight him. But I hate how Jason's sword turns into, like, the little power dagger. Yeah. Um, it just, it shrinks. It's tiny, I it's know. It's tiny, and then it grows. It's like... It's like, eh. <laughs> It's like, I'm gonna get you with a butter knife. <laughs> and the reason, yeah, the reason why I stand all the way at the edge is so that... <laughs> the game automatically backflips. It's cool. And yeah. also, in most anime, the guy always turns around his back and the dude blows up. Oh, so, okay. It's right, time to cool. summon the Zords. We need dinosaur power now! I had that in me. That was amazing. That's how you summon the Zords. Saber 2 Tiger! <laughs> you Billy have to shout be, it out. Triceratops! Yeah! Yeah, you always have to shout it out. Oh, okay. Annoy the neighbors. Mastodon! <laughs> no, I'm saying, yeah, it, it, yeah, it makes you... Pterodactyl! You should hear how Amy Joe's pterodactyl. It doesn't sound like a valley girl at all. Tyrannosaurus! That's because she's embodying her, um... She did yeah. really good with the voiceover part, because remember that most of the rangers, the actors, were not in the suits... The first and second season when they filmed a lot of stuff outside oh, of the command center it was okay. all stunt people yeah because the story is there was a common writer in the 70s or 80s that got hurt and after that um bandai and koei or whatever um and toei they developed a thing where for the most part their actors could not do their own stunts so they had to bring in a stunt yeah. guy and the stunt guy would just stay in the suit and do all the suit stuff that's why at conventions why most of the uh, Power Ranger actors, they don't know a lot of their signature, um, oh you know, my especially gosh. when they call them the Zords and things they like that. They don't even know their own moves? No. Oh my gosh. Wow. Austin does. Austin and, um, uh, what, You'd what, what, think they would Adam watch do. the show and learn it so they'd know what to do at the conventions. Yeah. Ugh, I can't believe you guys. I'm putting so much pressure on them. 
But um, wasn't Kimberly one of the youngest or no? No, the all. youngest. No, Kimberly, David, and uh, Walter were all 19 and 20. Okay. Tommy was 18. Okay. And, no, Tommy. No, Tommy was 21, I believe. Jason was 16 or 17 when they started. Whoa! Oh, oh my God! Austin St. John was the youngest, but he looked the oldest. Yeah. Uh, Twee was actually pretty old too when she started in Power Rangers but she loved her fan base she did all kinds of really cool stuff and she went on to do The Crow and some other stuff and she was going to do a movie with uh, Walter and Austin but they had a bad agent and he like ran out on them or something yeah I would have been so annoyed um, being Trini like not being able to have my skirt and things like that but it feels like she's such like an easygoing humble person that it didn't bother her but I I really I had the opportunity to meet the uh, original Power Rangers they were in Albany I couldn't go and I would have gotten to meet Twee and Austin and um, they had the original five there they were doing some this was before it got really popular that they were there oh crap somebody's trying to get us on Skype no this is this Go is what away. happens. We're in the middle of a, a battle. Yes. Of we're, epic proportions. We're fighting the Cyclops. And before I forget, the Cyclops is actually Goldar's um like mechanized megazord, like anti-megazord. Oh, okay. And right. it has two forms, which we're seeing right now. I, I was gonna say Megazord, Megazord battle out loud, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot. Is that the Megazord? Yeah, they're fighting in a Megazord against the anti-megazord. Go away! Seriously! Ah, this Skype is, people. This is what happens when I use the a world, broadcaster. The world's safety is at stake right now. I know. We need to win. We have to defeat Rita. Now, what's happening right now, this is would actually be the finale of the Sentai series, like fighting Cyclops on top of the moon, because the rangers storm into Bondora's or Rita's um, moon palace, and they yeah. seal her back into her evil jar, oh. and that's how the series ended. But Does... Saban, because the series got so popular, Fox had to order like more episodes, and he was like, I don't have anything else. So oh he had to contact... Um, the company that made the stuff and they did Zoo Ranger 2. They got all the stunt guys yeah. and they filmed like 50 battles that were 10 minutes long and then they sent the stuff to Saban. Wow. And he turned that into the um, rest of season 1 and part of season 2. Yeah. Like before the Super Putties. Like before the Lord Zed stuff, that was all Zoo Ranger 2. And that yeah. was really cool oh, stuff. Yeah. You were telling me that um, they, I mean, because the... Uh, the people in Japan have been doing this for like 30, decades. 40 years, yeah. So like they were able to do it so much faster than because uh, Americans were not even used to um, Sentai at all. No. So yeah, yeah, because they were filming like two Sentai series. So they when... just got people from Japan to do all the stunt mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. They almost do like there was one time where they were doing like two Sentai shows at a time. Wow. Like, you know, and they would also do team up episodes. But I just have to say that right now this is a bad. Example of teenagers. I know. The only person buckled I know. is Jason. I know. You go, Jason. Maybe Billy. Billy is. But he looks it's... like he might be. Yeah. And there is Zach showing off the hip hop keto. And I like this ending screen because this is Ernie's Juice Bar, where the teens would always hang out at the end yeah. of the episode, do their PSA. Um, Trini actually did work at the juice bar. Oh, so they have her totally accurately behind the juice bar there. And then uh, a character named Curtis, after she left or was in the process of leaving uh, during the White Ranger, he was the guy who was working with Ernie. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. they did everything to literally replace everybody after they left. Wow. And, you know. And those are the guys. Bulk and Skull. They were mean. The bullies. They're the mean guys. Yep. Yeah. I don't like that Jason has a crew cut. The only characters that look really good in this game are Billy is accurate to the Day of the Dumpster episode. Kimberly is kind of wearing the Day of the Dumpster. And Trini is wearing, um, I believe, her outfit from High Five. They don't even have, they don't have anything right about Zach. Didn't Zach have like much taller hair anyway? No, he got no? he got oh, the curls. Oh, okay. Or, All right. Okay. He had like mind. regular hair in the first oh, season. Okay. In the second right. season, he had like more. Oh, okay. Mid to like yeah, mid Semi. Hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The soon to be dreadlock phase. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I didn't like the, those bullies. I mean, well, nobody. Bulk and Skull. Lo- people loved Bulk and Skull. Oh, they, really? Yeah, they were the com- comedy relief. Oh, okay. Apparently, putting people mean. in trash bins is considered mean. <laughs> yes, comedy relief. I'm really surprised that even Kimberly was able to, like, you'd think she was like a mean, popular girl, but even 
it was so cool how they all kind of stood up for each other, like you yeah. know, and learned to get along, even though they're also different. Cool. They're also different. I loved the the diversity. It, aspect it was a of great message. Power Rangers. Yeah. But anyway, gamers, that's going to conclude our look at Power Rangers on the Super Nintendo. I almost said Super ah, Mega Force. there she is. Yeah, there's Rita. Lock she survived. Up. Make sure that you guys tune in uh, later today for the release of Power Rangers Super Mega Force on the 3DS. God bless and happy gaming. If there's a Power Ranger game you want us to look at, let us know in the comments below, and we'll do our best to make it more phenomenal. Bye, guys. See ya.